You've been listening to President Biden at the White House talking about putting what he calls fair competition back into the American economy, promoting competition to help consumers and workers. You see the president there surrounded by several members of his cabinet signing that sweeping executive order. 72 actions and recommendations to federal government agencies. The White House says will lower prices for families, increase wages for workers, and promote innovation and faster economic growth. I want to bring in my ABC News colleague, White House correspondent Karen Travers, an economist and senior fellow at Harvard University, Megan Green. Thank you both for joining me. Um, Karen, let me start with you there on the North Lawn of the White House. Uh, the president called himself a proud capitalist. He did, and he said that capitalism without competition isn't capitalism, it's exploitation. And today, Kenneth, the president is signing a very sweeping executive order. 72 items in there. He's getting a little bit of a laugh there as he's handing out pens, which is what presidents do when they're signing something like this, to give everybody who might have been involved in it a chance to have a little keepsake Thank from the event. Much. But uh, Kenneth, the president focused on three key things that he says this executive order will do. One, allowing the safe importation of drugs from Canada. Two, allowing hearing aids to be purchased over the counter, that you don't have to go to a specialist. Let's hear what the president's saying here. The United States expects when ransomware operation is coming from this soil, even though it's not, not sponsored by the state, we expect them to act if we give them enough information to act on who that is. And secondly, that we've set up a means of communications now on a regular basis to be able to communicate to one another when each of us thinks something's happening in another country that affects the home country. And so it went well, I'm optimistic. You said three weeks ago there would be consequences. Will there be, sir? Yes. A couple of questions there after he signed that executive order. It was a little bit tough to hear. Uh, Karen, I'll go to you and put you on the spot. Uh, did you hear a little bit of the president's answer there? Yeah, the president, Kenneth, was responding to a question about the phone call he had with Russian President Vladimir Putin today, a phone call that the White House says lasted an hour. And in that conversation, they focused extensively on recent ransomware attacks. Of course, this was a big topic of their summit in Geneva, Switzerland last month. And there were a lot of questions today at the White House briefing, Kenneth, about how much the president pushed Vladimir Putin. Did he say that the United States would be taking action? And what is going to be a red line on these ransomware attacks uh, that the administration says are originating outside, inside Russia. Kenneth, the White House was trying to keep the readout of that call very tight, very contained. They wouldn't say whether or not Vladimir Putin said that he would stop doing any of this or if there's anything he could do to stop these ransomware attacks. But as you heard the president there say, uh, he made clear that message that the United States can and will act if the president decides to do something about this spate of cyber attacks that so far has shown no sign of stopping. And we'll be covering more of that coming up soon on the breakdown. But turning back to this, the point and the focus of this event there at the White House's latest event, uh, Karen, uh, we the president interrupted you there answering those questions. But I think you were taking down the um, the things the executive order is designed to do, um, banning or limiting non-compete agreements, allowing rule changes so that hearing aids can be sold over the counter, ban excessive early termination fees by Internet companies, and a big one that's likely going to get a lot of attention, which is calling on the Department of Transportation to consider issuing rules requiring airlines to refund fees when baggage delayed or in-flight services are not provided as advertised, something that will be helpful to a lot of people who travel. Uh, what is the White House trying to do here? What's the president trying to do? Yeah, the president says he's trying to increase competition and make that better for American consumers. So your bags are lost, you get a quicker refund now. The Wi-Fi isn't working on your plane, you can get reimbursed for that too. Another element of this which is interesting is that if you own an iPhone or an appliance and you want to try and fix it yourself or take it to an a, a independent shop to get it fixed, you wouldn't lose your warranty protections. A lot of things included in this, Kenneth, and the president says this is all aimed at helping the American consumer with prices and greater access to things that they want and need. And let's bring in economist Megan Green. Megan, I won't tell you what I got uh, in econ in college, so we really need you right now. Uh, break this down for us. Uh, will this help the consumer? 
Yeah, absolutely, on, on many different levels. Look, 75% of the sectors in the U.S. have seen a huge increase in market concentration over the past few decades, and that means superstar firms have risen to the top in a bunch of different sectors. It's really bad for consumers. If you think about your cable provider, for example, you're, you're probably filled with rage immediately because there's not much competition in that sector. Also, pharmaceuticals is another example. So you get poor services and poor goods as a result of this. Also, if you've got superstar firms who are gobbling up all potential competitors who are small up and comers, they're under less pressure to innovate and invest all the time so that they can stay at the top. Instead, they're just acquiring and dismantling anyone who might threaten their market lead. And so you get less investment and therefore less growth, less innovation, less productivity growth. So that's bad for the economy overall. But most importantly, it's really bad for workers. If you work in one of these sectors with just a handful of superstar companies and you want to change jobs, you don't have that many options for potential employers. So if you get a job offer from a, another big superstar company, you, you're not really in a position to negotiate for better wages or benefits. Also, superstar firms talk to one another. They know what the other uh, superstar firms are offering in terms of comp. So as a worker, you've got very little power, and that's a big driver of low wage growth and inequality. So in the medium to long term, these changes should have a significant impact for the American consumer and more importantly, the American worker. And Megan, in the recent history of our country, has something like this help consumers and workers. Uh, the president is essentially alluded to the fact that it's been a while since there's been action taken to help consumers and workers in this way. Uh, in the history of our country, have we seen something like this before and has it helped? So we definitely have, and President Biden alluded to it when he talked about a round of antitrust breaking up the big conglomerates, the railroads, the Vanderbilts, for example. Um, since then, we haven't really had this in the U.S., but we have actually seen it in other places. So the U.S. used to be the poster child for competition and open markets and capitalism. And while no one was really watching, actually, Europe has become much more competitive than the U.S., and that's largely because you know, member states of the EU had to sign up to EU regulations. And so we actually have seen improvements in other parts of the world, but the U.S. has just kind of been backsliding um, for decades now, and, and it's really had big implications for Americans. All right, Megan Green taking us back to econ class, and Karen Travers always schooling us. Thank you so much <laughs> for joining us. We'll have continuing updates right here on ABC News Live throughout the day and a complete wrap-up today at 3 p.m. Eastern on The Breakdown. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kenneth Moten. Have a good rest of your day. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.